So after all the soldering and sawing of the last video, I get to cut some stones to go into it now. This is some tumbled lapis that I got at a local store called Lady of the Lake. So this is going to be the main stone for the top of the necklace. I'm going to have to flatten the back of this so I can glue it onto a dowel, and then I can start shaping it into the proper round shape needed to fit the bezel I made. Please excuse my poor skills in regards to actually using the lapidary machine. It, this is not something I'm very practiced in, but I wanted to get a little more practice in making this piece, so I wanted to cut my own stones. And you really can't learn how to do anything without, well, doing it. Now that I have a nice flat back onto this, I'm going to glue it onto a dowel and see how much of it I need to cut off so it'll fit our bezel. So here's the stone glued onto a dowel. This makes it so you have something to hold onto when you're using the lapidary machine and you can get even cuts this way. Now I need to measure the bezel and see what size I need to make the stone. This is completely backwards to how I normally do this, but everything should work out just fine. So from the looks of it, I just need to turn this oval stone into a round stone and I should be good. So what I'm going to focus on is the elongated lobe shape on the stone that is off-center and try to center everything around the dowel so I can make a perfectly round stone to fit inside the bezel. And I'm also going to make sure to test fit it in the bezel as much as possible so I don't take too much off and have too small of a stone. And there we go, now it fits inside the bezel perfectly. Now I get to start doming this, which is one of the areas I'm not the best at. I also have to make sure that it's not too short for the bezel and not too steep of a curve for the bezel to actually set in place. So now I just need to work up the grits and then polish it when it's done and then hopefully we'll have a nice looking stone when this is all said and done. And here we are, this is about as good as I'm going to be able to get this stone. Also looking for a more older, ancient look to this whole thing, so I want things to look a little weathered, so it kind of works that I'm not the best at making cabochons. So now I need to get the stone off the dowel. And to do this, I normally can just pull them off, but when they have too much glue or just really suck, I have to saw them off and then clean off the back. There is a product you can use with this, that you just use heat and it'll pop right off, but I don't have any of that on hand, so this is how I'm going to have to do it. So here's the stone fit into the bezel, and it looks like it fits pretty good, and it has the right height that I want to it. If you ever do put a stone into a bezel that doesn't have any type of hole cut in the back of it, make sure to put some sort of thread or floss behind it, because if it gets stuck in there, you're going to have a hard time getting it out without having something behind it to pull it out. So that's enough playing with stones for me, I'm going to get back to soldering this piece together. First I'm going to have to actually take all of it apart again and clean up the backing and clean up any spots that have tarnished from it sitting here. And then we're going to flux everything, place all of our solder, and lay everything perfectly back in its places and hope it doesn't move when all the solder flows under heat and yeah. As you can see, the legs already have solder on the back of them, so I'm not going to have to do anything besides put flux on them and place them where they go. I've also already pre-soldered the back of the bezel, so I don't have to add any more chips there. 
As for the wings and the main body, I'm going to have to flux the back of them and I'm going to stack easy solder onto the backs of them. And the flux will basically glue them in place and then I can flip them over and place them onto the back plate. For the bottom bezel and the legs, I'll be placing them on here very carefully and referencing the picture that I printed out of the whole thing put together so I know exactly where everything's supposed to go. For the bottom and middle bezel, I'll be placing the solder chips on the inside of them. So when the solder flows, it should go around the inside and bottom of them and not make a mess all over everything. So I'm going to start heating everything from the top to make sure everything is all nice and hot. So when I go to the back side of this, the solder should flow between both pieces and make sure everything is soldered down. Once this is done, I'm going to check all the pieces to make sure everything is soldered down and go back in if anything is not and add little bits solder and re-solder them if needed. So here's the piece after all the soldering and being inside of the pickle holding solution to clean off all the fire scale. I thought it would be interesting to cut a symbol behind the stone so you could see it through the back and the symbol I chose was the Eye of Ra. So I made a little stencil and I'm going to put it in here. So I'm going to have to drill out two little spots in this so I can put my saw blade through them and cut them out. Normally I'd be using a center punch to start these, but I don't know where it is, so I'm going to be using this and a hammer. Next I'm going to use a ball burr to basically drill a hole through this, and the reason why I'm using the ball burr is I don't have a drill bit small enough to drill these holes. Whenever you use the burr tools, make sure you use the Pro Cut or some sort of lubricant so you don't dole them out super quick. So now as I'm cutting out this piece, I realize that I messed up on my design, but I also thought of a way to fix it. So I'm just going to cut everything out and then figure out how I'm going to add in the center piece of the eye. With the stone in, you can see that there's a large gap between the back of this and the stone. So what I'm going to do is solder two pieces of metal together, cut out the center piece of the eye, and then do an inlay of more lapis, and hopefully it looks good. And there we go, half the problem is solved. This is going to be a necklace, so I'm going to have to drill a couple holes in the top here so I could make these rings that I made fit through them and you can actually wear it. So now that I have the holes in here, I can test fit the rings to make sure that they move freely and don't get caught on anything. So I'm going to rough up the middle and bottom bezels. This way when I do the inlays, the adhesive will stick to it way better than if it was smooth inside. Next I'm going to file down the tops of both of those bezels. This is due to me having to cut them shorter from the original pieces of metal and them not being 100% even. So if I file them like this, I can make them as flat as possible. So when I drilled the holes for the rings, they were not even. So I'm going to go in and even them up and cut little slots in so it'll fix this and balance out the piece better. And there we go, much better. So now with a steel wire brush, I'm going to clean it off and then I'm going to start cleaning off all of the copper buildup or copper look 
to all the brass so we can get a better look at how everything is going to look and so we can start using some chemicals on this to age it. I'm also going to hammer down the wings a little bit because I feel that they might be a snagging hazard. So I contacted Jack's Chemicals asking them if they would like to have their chemicals in some of my videos. And they were more than happy to send some stuff over. So be on the lookout for more of these chemicals being used in other videos and showing you how to use them. If you're interested in buying any of these chemicals, I'll have a link in the description to their website. And thank you, Jax Chemicals, for sending this to me. So the first thing I'm going to use is a blackener on the brass and copper. This can be applied with a paintbrush or by dipping it. And make sure you're wearing gloves when you're doing this. You don't want chemicals on your hands. Also, make sure the piece has no oils and is as clean as possible, or the chemicals will not work as intended. As you can see, it starts working extremely fast. So I let it sit for a while until it got to how I wanted it to look, and then rinsed it off in some clean water. So it looks like the black didn't stick onto the wings how I wanted it to, so I'm going to clean them off again, and then reapply it. So I want the brass on this to be a little bit more shiny than it is with the darkener on it. So I'm going to go over all of it with a wire brush. So there we go, and I like how it's looking so far. But I'm going to silver plate the back of this with another one of the chemicals. The reason why I'm doing this is a lot of people have a reaction to copper over time, and not as many with silver. So if I plate the back of this with silver and put a protectant over the top of it, it should have no problem on anyone's skin. So the same rules apply with this. Make sure your piece is perfectly clean with no oils or any coatings on it. Make sure you wear gloves with this. And when you're using this, you have to make sure that it doesn't drip onto the underside of this or you're gonna have to clean it off because it will plate anything it touches basically well any metal at least also keep in mind this is a very thin layer of silver so it can be scratched off or worn off if it's not protected properly and it can and will tarnish really quickly if you don't put anything on top of it I'm going to use Renaissance wax on this piece but you can also use lacquers And here it is with its nice silver plating on it. So here is some crushed up lapis that I did off camera. How I did it is I basically took the stone, put it into a paper towel, or you put it into a normal towel, and then put it onto the bench pin um, anvil, and hit it with a hammer until it was powderized or broken into the chunks.
and we're going to use all these little pieces to do our inlays on the middle and bottom of our pendant. And basically what I'm going to do is put pieces into them and then put the finer powder around them and then put CA glue on top of it that will soak through. I should be using a thin variant of the CA glue but I don't have any more or it's dried up all the way so all I have is the thick version. It'll work almost the same I just have to put a little more effort into not making a mess with it. Once the glue is hardened, or if you use an activator and instantly harden glue, you're going to have to shave all the stone down so it's flush with the bezel. I'm going to use hand files to do this, and it's going to take a little bit of elbow grease, but I like doing it this way the best, especially with having all the other parts of this sticking up, where I can't just stick it onto my flat lap and cut them down really quick. After all that, if it exposes any holes or gaps or anything like that, I go back in and put more of the powder into the holes and then put more glue on top of it and then go through the process again until everything is perfect. After that, I'm going to polish those two areas with different types of grinding wheels that have different grits going up to a thousand and then an actual buffing pad. If I lose any stone during this process, I'll have to glue more in and then do it over again. So setting this particular stone was maybe one of the most difficult ones I've ever had to do, seeing that the bezel was way too thick to bend around this easily. So I had to use a rotary powered hammer to move the metal around enough and then use a dowel and a ham handheld hammer to hit it in place just to move the metal to clamp down onto the stone. So if you are making one like this, make sure to use a thinner bezel or you're going to have a lot of trouble setting your stone. As you can see, the back of this is really tarnished and uh, some pieces of the silver plating are missing now due to me rubbing it along the metal trying to set that stone. I'm going to have to replate it after I inset the stones on the back. So I'm going to glue this eyepiece here, so it won't move around when I put all the stone around it. I've also purposely left the back of the stone very rough, so the glue will adhere to it. Sorry about my hand being in the shot the whole time, but I wanted to make sure this was as center as I could possibly get it. So now I'm going to inset the stone by putting larger pieces in first that will fit, and then adding progressively smaller and smaller pieces until it's filled out, and then putting CA glue on top of it and spraying it with an activator to harden it instantly. So once all that's done, I'm going to file all this off and basically make it as flat as possible. So after a bit of filing, it wasn't really going down as fast as I wanted it to, so I changed over to the lapping machine and basically cleaned off the entire back of this. And now with it all clean, I'm going to reapply the silver plating chemicals and clean up any that has leaked onto the front side, and then we should be done. The very last thing I did is covered it in some Renaissance wax so it wouldn't tarnish. And that's it for this piece. I'd like to thank Jax Chemicals for sending over all the chemicals I used in this, and the artist for letting me use their artwork as a reference. You can find links to said artist and to the products used in this in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.